Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel That Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation, Romans 1.16. And that's how you know I am a Bible believer, because if you are using a new translation, a dumbed-down translation, a Roman Catholic, Sinaiticus, Vaticanus translation, it does not say in Romans 1.16 the gospel of Christ. And if someone tells you that they are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, then you're on to something as far as them using the right Bible and not a dumbed-down translation. And if you've been told that people in the Old Testament have been looking forward, forward to the cross and people in the New Testament are looking backward to the cross, you have been lied to again by your pastor. Matthew 21, 23, and when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders, and note, I'm in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Matthew 21 is before Jesus Christ dies on the cross, Mark 9 is before Jesus Christ dies on the cross, Luke 9 is before Jesus Christ dies on the cross, and John 20 is actually after Jesus Christ dies on the cross. So I wanted to let you know that anything before Jesus Christ dies on the cross is Old Testament doctrine for Israel, and anything after Jesus Christ dies on the cross is New Testament doctrine for Israel on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 17 okay so here's Matthew 21 23 and these are the people that were looking forward to the cross right and when he was and by the way the people that the pastors claim to be looking forward to the cross would be Old Testament people before Jesus Christ dies on the cross whether it be Israel or Gentiles or or both okay so here's Matthew 21 23 and when he was come into the temple. The chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave the, thee this authority? And Mark 9, 30 through 32. Notice, they didn't know who gave them this authority. Okay? Mark 9, 30 through 32. And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying and were afraid to ask. So they understood not that Jesus was going to get killed and rise the third day. Luke 9, 44 through 45. Let these sayings seek, sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. But they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them that they perceived it not, and they feared to ask him of that saying. And then John 20, verse 9. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. So notice, they understood not that Jesus was going to rise again from the dead, that Jesus was going to get killed. They understood not. And they knew not the scripture. Since they had all been preaching the gospel of the kingdom, knowing nothing of the cross, that means the gospel of the kingdom would be different from the gospel of the grace of God. Because the gospel of the grace of God is all about the cross. Have you ever thought about that? The gospel of the kingdom, Acts chapter 2, verse 38 Repent and be baptized for your sins to be remitted, and you'll receive the Holy Ghost. Nothing about the cross. Have you ever noticed that? Maybe now you will. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved. 
it is the power of God, right? Romans 1.16. That explains why we preach the cross and most of your denominational, non-denominational places, right? They're not churches. You're the church, which is the temple, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Preach performance. Follow Jesus, living for Jesus, making Jesus the Lord of your life. Asking Jesus into your heart. Making Jesus the Lord of your life, etc., etc., right? When you deal with people who think there is only one gospel, one plan of salvation in the Bible, you must realize, and this is, this is going to be hard maybe for some of you who have just found this website, you're dealing with unsaved people who are headed for hell for eternity. They invariably attempt to mix grace with performance, which is not possible to do. Romans 11.6 and if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. The gospel of the grace of God is only found in Paul's writings. Not from Genesis to the cross. Not from the cross to Acts chapter 8. And not from Hebrews to Revelation. Paul's, my gospel, is not found there. It's only found there if you have a crooked pastor who takes it from Paul's writings and places it there. Okay, well, it doesn't belong there if you understand progressive revelation. And if you do understand that, you'll find it only in Paul's writings, which, if you look at most denominational, non-denominational websites, they'll tell you that Jesus Christ died for your sins, but then they'll tell you that you have to be water baptized to be obedient to Christ, which means that you have to make yourself manifest with Israel, just like Jesus did, which is absolute heresy. And then they'll tell you that you have to be a part of the church, right? You have to serve in the church, which, show me where it says that anywhere in your Bible, but that's what these Bible boneheads do, so that way their business flourishes and your pockets are empty. Okay, that's how a business works, right? They have to give you something to sell so you spend your money. So most churchgoers think that they're doing God good by having their so-called crooked pastor take Israel's tithes and offerings and put them in their storehouse, which is really their bank account, and tell you that you're going to get a blessing from God when really they're just making more money off your hard work because you don't want to read your Bible and rightly divide it and be the minister of reconciliation that you are if you are saved. You would rather be spoon-fed to the pit of hell. And it's sad. So if you trust 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, you're saved. Okay, You don't have to pray down front. You don't have to ask Jesus into your heart. You don't have to go to church. You're the church. And your job now, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21, is to be that minister. He makes you a minister. And guess what? He makes you a minister because you trust the gospel, Paul's my gospel, without going to seminary. Isn't that amazing? Without spending a dime. Simply by trusting that, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is not what Peter says in Acts chapter 2. This is what he says to Israel, because Peter's ministry is only to the circumcision, Galatians chapter 2, verse 9, not us. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the Holy 
the gift of the Holy Ghost. Wow, so the gospel of the kingdom is not about being saved. It's about sin being remitted and the receiving of the Holy Ghost. But Paul's, my gospel, is about being saved. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 2, by which also ye are saved. Trust that gospel, ye are saved. And today, we're going to continue to look through a gospel track, which, and you're going to find out for yourself, that does not contain the gospel. And this gospel uh, track is by Jack Chick. And like I said in, the, in um, lesson number one, in preaching number one, I found this on the floor at my workplace. And we're going to dive into it today. And I started off with how crooked pastors teach that everyone's looking forward to the cross and everyone's looking backward to the cross. And we just went through the verses in Israel's Old Testament and New Testament doctrine under the law that none of them knew what Jesus Christ was talking about, about his death and his resurrection. And so... You will notice in this chick track that he starts in Israel's Old Testament doctrine that is only for Israel. And then he jumps around to Israel's New Testament doctrine, which is only to Israel. And that's on the authority of Exodus 19, Hebrews chapter 8, Jeremiah 31, and Ezekiel 36. It's not on my authority. The Bible makes it very clear that the Old and New Testament was never given to us. We were always strangers to the law and covenant, Ephesians 2.12. But the Old and New Testament was always and only given to Israel and the house of Judah. Read your Bible and believe it. But make sure you have a Bible, a 1769 Blaney King James Bible. It is perfect. Psalm chapter 12, verses 6 and 7, and without error. And God puts his word above his own name, Psalm 138, 2. Hopefully you do that too. Hopefully you're not some crooked pastor that calls himself reverend, which is only mentioned once in your Bible and it pertains to God's name, and you're not teaching people that everyone in the Old Testament is looking forward to the cross. And I think Billy Graham said that. Billy Graham made that one up. And didn't Billy Graham kiss the Pope's ring? So you definitely don't want to learn from that numbskull. So here it goes. Jack Chick's track, The Empty Tomb. And we're probably only going to get through part of this today, and then we'll finish it up next time. He starts with, Inside the great Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Who is he? I can't even answer his question. This is ridiculous. Where did he come from? How can a 12-year-old possibly know so much about Moses and the prophets? Wow, maybe we should give this track to Richard Jordan. Returning home after celebrating Passover, the boy's mother discovered he was missing. See Luke chapter 2, 41 through 50. And again, notice we are in Israel's Old Testament doctrine. I've looked everywhere. He's gone. He must still be in Jerusalem. We must go back. Look, there he is. The boys frighten me. He knows too much. They found him in the temple, questioning the astonished doctors. When Mary questioned her son, he said, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Many remember Gabriel's words. The holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. This fulfilled prophecy, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Isaiah 7.14, which is what? Old Testament doctrine for Israel. And yes, it is a prophecy fulfilled by Isaiah. Unknown to the religious leaders, that 12-year-old standing before them was God in the flesh, the very one who gave the law to Moses. Hebrews 1.2, now we're jumping to the New Testament for Israel, tells us Jesus Christ created the universe. How about just going to Colossians where it tells Jesus Christ created the universe, right? Colossians chapter 1, 
verses 18 and 19 rather than going to Hebrews. Because most people, like I've said, and that's what this station is dedicated to. It is dedicated to Pauline doctrine. And most people read their Bible backwards, okay? What they do is, is most are in Israel's program. And they read that and they study that. And isn't that where all the great stories are, right? It's in Israel's program, right? But they never read and study Paul's writings. But Paul tells us that his writings are all about the unsearchable riches of Christ and his writings are the manifold wisdom of God. Wouldn't you want to read and understand the manifold wisdom of God first before you dove into 95% of the rest of your Bible, which is all and only for Israel? Many people, and you'll see if you study church history, are not Pauline. They miss the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16, 25, Colossians 1, 25, and 26, Ephesians chapter 3, and they do not make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery because they totally miss the 5% of their Bible, which is Pauline truth. And this is exactly where Jack Chick is, if you haven't noticed. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. John 1.10. This is the greatest life that ever lived. Again, we're in John now. Okay, We're just jumping around, all around Old Testament Israel and New Testament Israel. And we hope that he stumbles across Paul's writings when it comes to the death, burial, and resurrection. Right? Well, we'll see at the end of this message. Maybe not today, but maybe next time. Jesus' ministry began at 30. John the Baptist introduced him. Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. See John chapter 1, 29 through 34. John meant that on a future Passover, the Lord Jesus would be sacrificed to pay the terrible price for the sins of all men. This was his purpose in coming from heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. The people were astonished at his doctrine. Matthew chapter 5, 27 through 28, right? That's where most churches are, right? They're in the Beatitudes, right? Robert Schuler had a book, The Be Happy Attitudes, right? That's where people are. That's where people sell Jesus. It's all in the Old Testament doctrine for Israel. Have you ever noticed that? He shocked the religious community by opening blind eyes, deft ears, and healing lepers. He even raised the dead. See Matthew 8 and 9, right? These, this, like I said, this is where all the good stories are. Definitely not in Paul's writings. Paul's writing is all about doctrine for the body of Christ. Paul's writings are that you are crucified with Christ, Galatians 2.20, and that you are dead, Romans chapter 6, right? And you are placed into the body of Christ by the baptism of death, which is a dry baptism by the Holy Ghost. Is that a fun story to tell? No, but hey, let's stick to Matthew, right? Lazarus, come forth. Jesus taught that he was the only way to heaven. I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, but by... No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. John 11.25 and John 14.6 is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He publicly attacked the religious system, knowing it would bring about his death. Now, let me make something clear. Okay, You can go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can go to Israel's doctrine to get definition, to get historical application, to get spiritual application. But you have to be very careful with the spiritual application because the spiritual application of most of your Old Testament doctrine for Israel and New Testament doctrine for Israel is not applicable today for the body of Christ. So you have to be very careful with the spiritual application, which no denominational, non-denominational is careful about. Okay, They take any verse out of its context and apply it in their life today, but that's only the positive verses, says Rick Warren, because the negative verses, you can't apply those. Okay, 
So be very careful with the spiritual application, knowing that it's not your doctrine, okay? Because every verse in the Bible has three applications, historical, spiritual, and doctrinal, okay? But because most people don't have the spiritual eyes to see that most pastors are telling them spiritual lies by taking the spiritual approach in the Old and New Testament, they are misleading scores of souls to hell. Okay, But you can go to Old Testament Israel's doctrine and know that Jesus is the truth and the life, and no one comes unto the Father only but by Him. Yes, that is doctrinal truth for Israel, and that is also truth for us when we get the definition of the character of the Lord Jesus Christ from Israel's Old Testament doctrine. Okay? Yes, you can get the definition of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can get doctrinal truths that are not written by Paul, but get that give us a firm understanding of who the Lord Jesus Christ is and knowing that he is the only way, the truth, and the life. Okay. But notice, does he ever say that that is the way to heaven when he says that in John 14, verse 6? He publicly attacked the religious system knowing it would bring about his death. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Matthew 23. In the high priest's palace, his enemies plotted his death. Satan provided the traitor, Judas Iscariot. And that is absolutely right. Some people have even written about Judas possibly being saved. No, Judas was definitely a messenger of Satan. Judas Iscariot. See Matthew 26. Judas agreed to betray the creator of the universe for only 30 pieces of silver. And you know, you've seen books that are out. The Gospel of Judas, right? I would highly recommend that you get the doctrine resonant in you be start, before you start reading garbage like that. At the Last Supper, notice that statement. Your Bible never says that Jesus' supper is the last. That is Roman Catholic terminology that Jack Chick didn't even pick up. But he did pick up that Judas Iscariot was a messenger of, of Satan. So figure that one out. The Last Supper is a product of Roman Catholicism. Jesus says to his disciples that he will sup with them again in the Bible, if you're a Bible believer. So at the Last Supper, which is horribly wrong, Jesus explained, this is actually the First Supper, Jesus explained how his crucifixion would be the last blood sacrifice for sins, eliminating the priesthood, Jesus himself would become God's permanent high priest. This do in remembrance of me. Luke 22, 19. Man could now come straight to God because of his final sacrifice on the cross for our sins. But his disciples didn't understand. His disciples didn't understand. And those are the verses we went through in the beginning of this. So why would you give doctrine that people did not understand in their Bible as a track. Just a question that I pose. Later in the Garden of Gethsemane, I mean, we've already gone through 10 pages and we have not heard the gospel of the grace of God. And actually, you know what, I'm going to wrap it up here before we go to the Garden of Geth Geth Gethsemane. And before Jack starts mixing doctrine with the body of Christ, because the last 10 pages, he keeps it to 
the doctrine for Old Testament Israel and the doctrine for New Testament Israel. Okay? He goes from Matthew to Luke to John to Hebrews. Okay? But he never tells you where he's jumping around to. Have you ever noticed that? And this tract doesn't tell us that he uses the King James Bible either. Which, in my opinion, if you are a Bible believer, if you are a Christian, if you understand biblical Christianity, which most don't anymore because most don't even use a Bible, you would definitely make it clear that you are using God's perfectly preserved words, which we have not heard anything about, nor have we heard the gospel, the grace of God, in this track, and we've gone through 10 pages. Now, if you're unsaved and you find this track on the ground, like I did at my workplace, do you think you're going to read through 10 pages? How about 23 pages? Because that's how many pages are in this track. Does the Apostle Paul give you a 23-page track in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4? through 4? If you saw 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, through 4, the Gospel of the Grace of God, on a bumper sticker, and you read it and believed it, guess what? You would be saved. You don't need the Bible to be saved. So, again, as we continue through this lengthy track, we've gone through 10 pages, we have not seen the gospel of the grace of God, but we, what we did finish on is that the disciples didn't understand. Do you think an unsaved person has? If you think an, un -person, an unsaved person might understand through the first 10 pages, hey, email me at preachingthegospelthatsaves.com. Go to the contact page and email me and tell me why you think an unsaved person would believe what the disciples didn't even understand. And then, please, subscribe to my channel. And if there's anybody else who needs to learn about God's perfectly preserved word, about rightly dividing the word of truth, about being Pauline, about being dispensational, and about understanding Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, let somebody know about my website. Thanks again for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.